Hi there, in this video I want to talk to you about my first week of having my solar panels and what it was like and what a week it was. Now the install took one day, that's all it took, one day. The scaffolders should have turned up in the morning at 7am but they didn't, they turned up about lunchtime. Uh, that meant that things were a little bit slower than they should have been but most of the internal work was done uh, with the wiring and the inverters instead while the scaffolding was going up at lunchtime and then the panels went up in the afternoon and everything was kind of finished by about six o'clock in the evening at which point I was told the panels were drawing sort of uh, about 20 watts only that was the third week in March in 2022. Now after that had all uh, happened, the next day I was like a child running down the stairs on Christmas morning. Uh, it was a really sunny morning when I woke up and I basically had no idea about what was going to happen uh, regarding the smart meter. Uh, I wondered if my smart meter was going to run backwards or if it was going to show minus figures for exporting or what was going to happen well it turns out that your actual your smart meter shows on mine anyway shows a pylon symbol uh, denoting that you're actually exporting power now i didn't have any stats for the first day because i didn't get to use the actual um, my solar edge app on the first day but i have got data from the second day onwards um, I had a we had a really really sunny uh, first sort of five days um, to begin with, and I was just amazed how much uh, energy we were actually producing. Really enough energy to power kind of four or five houses on the street, to be honest. And I just didn't we just didn't know what to do with the power. We were going from using as little power as possible to using kind of to having all this power that we just didn't know what to do with it. So I'll tell you what really happened was, and obviously remember the first day, um, you don't get paid for your export. So anything that you export is just getting lost back to the grid. So we were trying to use as much power as we could. If you wanna see how long uh, getting your setup for export payments takes, then see my other video here, um, as it takes around six weeks for that to happen. So for the first six weeks, we weren't getting paid uh, for any of our exports. So it was really funny that I was basically running around the house just trying to charge literally anything that had a battery, whether it was like a, a laptop, a tablet, my phone, a sports watch, um, camera batteries, anything at all. We were kind of charging up, to be honest. And it's really funny that things were coming out of the uh, cupboards that we hadn't used before because they were too expensive, such as my 500 watt um, oil field radiator. We'd had that on. Uh, don't forget this was the third week of March so it was still chilly in the house we still had the central heating on and then we, we found we'd got a one kilowatt uh, fan heater which we'd never dare put that on before uh, I think we used to take that camping with us or something so that came out and it was boosting the heat in the house as well just to use all of this power that we were now getting that we just didn't know what to do with uh, other things were happening as well. I decided to turn on to turn on the immersion heater as well, which was 1.5 kilowatt. Um, we still had the heating on, so that was still being uh, heated up. The water was still being heated up by the boiler, but it was getting a boost from the electricity as well from the immersion. So we were we were managing to do that. Uh, other stuff that we couldn't use. Other electricity we couldn't use was just being piped down out, out the front door and we just lost it. Um, but we were also managing to, the EV charge was already installed with the Hypervolt. We put that onto uh, solar mode and we managed to trickle charge the kind of uh, the i3 as well uh, at the weekends when the car was here, when it wasn't sort of at work with my wife. Um, so it was a really interesting kind of first week. So let's just have a look at those first few days in the Solar Edge uh, app. Um, because that's all I had at the time. At the time, still no battery was installed when we first had the installation because that was kind of hard to get to, uh, or hard to get, and it was out of stock. So really, we just had the panels only. So the installation date was Monday the 21st of March, and the 22nd of March was our first day, but I didn't have access to the app, and it wasn't getting any data. So I can't include that day. But the next day, which was the 23rd, was again a really sunny day and we produced 25 kilowatts that day and if i go down to the timings there you can see at kind of 7 a.m 
we were getting 250 watts, which is brilliant because that kind of more or less is powering the house. It then kind of quickly zoomed up um, by 9 o'clock, 8.45 in the morning, we were sort of getting 3 kilowatts, which is crazy, really. Um, and then it was peaking up at 4 kilowatts because it hits the ceiling there because our inverter is 4 kilowatts. And then as the uh, sun slowly, we had a bit of cloud, obviously, and as the sun slowly moved and kind of dipped, um, we went down to 5.30 p.m. and we were kind of still getting 200 watts. So that was a really good day. And the second day... I mean, we had nearly the perfect bell curve there, really. We started again at kind of, I don't know, 6.30 in the morning, peaked at kind of midday, as you probably expect, a little bit of cloud there, and then we slowly came down again um, at sort of 400 watts at 5 o'clock in the evening. What we also found ourselves starting to do was around the lunch times, we would actually start to, as I was at home, and start to cook the, the dinner, the tea, that is, the evening meal at lunchtime and put it in the oven then so we could use the power and then just wouldn't have to use then just reheat it probably a little bit in the microwave or something in the evening and use less power um, to actually cook the dinner um, so the third day well pretty much i would say that is pretty much um, a perfect uh, day there really look at the, the the perfect kind of bell curve that again starts up goes around till 12.45 and then slowly dips down again. Uh, my panels are south facing. I've got 10 panels um, facing south and four panels uh, facing east. So that's why I think in the morning with those four panels where I can actually get a couple, a few hundred watts uh, early in the morning, which I think is a really good thing um, until the south ones come in. And then obviously in the afternoon, I'm kind of losing the ones on the east a bit more. Um, and then it just suddenly sort of, sort of fades. So coming on to the next day, pretty much a perfect day again, really. And then it kind of slowly hit us that we were going to hit some bad days at the end of March. It couldn't be all like summer uh, sunshine at the end of March. So if I just go back and look at the first week in question. So here's these perfect sort of five days. Um, as you can see the peaks, they look fairly similar except for that one, which kind of didn't fill out so much in the morning on the 28th of March. Um, but then if I look at the month of March, there's a couple of days after that. So we were thinking, oh my gosh, look at all these. This solar is amazing. You know, when you have your solar installed, you might have a couple of dry, dreary, rainy days and you'll get like no power and think, oh my God, these solar panels are rubbish. Or you might have really nice days and think, oh my God, solar panels are amazing. Why didn't I do this sooner? But if we actually look at the week um, or the month, should I say, a couple of days after that, you can see these first few days where we had some really nice days and we were getting kind of 30 kilowatts a day, you know, 29, 25. And we were, the house really only uses in total 14 kilowatts a day, I would say, in total on average. So to get double that during the day, we just really didn't know what to do with the power. As I said before, we were sort of turning everything on. But then it hit us, well, as you can see here, after those first six days, Days kind of seven and eight. I mean, we would we, we bang straight back down to earth here from going from having nearly 30 kilowatts the day before to generating on a these were really cloudy, dark, rainy days on the 29th of March 2022. We got four kilowatts, just under four kilowatts for the whole day. So that is really bad. The next day. 6.6 .6, so a little bit better but again you can see here from the graph nowhere near like we were getting before and then you know the weather got better again 24 kilowatts so in that first week we actually had went from this jubilant kind of oh my god this is how it's going to be in the summer to kind of oh my god this is how it's really going to be in the winter for two difficult sort of two days so uh yeah it was good it's been it's been a really good um first week really of solar at the end of March. I think we were just really lucky for those first few sort of days when we had it installed. 
so what I'll do now is I'll kind of, in what well, I say now, but in future videos, I'll take you sort of month by month. Um, and the next video, we'll look at what April actually did. So uh, check that video out as soon as it comes out. So thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel as well. And I'll speak to you soon.